Yes, we are uh, now at the halfway point of the course, uh, the middle of this week four, we'll be uh, halfway done. So just uh, keep working on things, uh, plug it away. You're doing a great job in the forum discussions. Again, I'd, I'd really like to see you guys jump in there a little bit earlier in the week. I know the deadline's Friday, but jumping in early is going to give you more time to work on those projects on the weekend. Uh, this weekend, uh, you have the forum discussion, and you're going to look at some of Porter's five, five Forces, the National Competitive Analysis. I do want you to complete uh, the two templates. I put a template out there that you're going to rank uh, items. Uh, just fill in the template. And the other one is a spider diagram. You can use that one or create your own spider diagram. Dealing with those four factors. And again, adjusting them, you know, is... Um, it indicates in the syllabus the distance away or closer to whether the factors are unfavorable or favorable. And, and right now you should really be kind of be looking at maybe two countries for this week. Um, and then because you're going to be having to narrow it down for your final project to whatever country you're going to go with uh, to market your product or service. Again, the idea with the project is we're going to do this as a direct foreign investment that you're actually going to be investing in that country overseas, getting engaged with that local culture. So, uh, with that this week, uh, look at chapters 12 and 13. Uh, you look at chapter 12 is more about the management process, uh, a lot about the, the planning. A lot of what you're doing now is just the first phase of the planning, you know, and then kind of looking at adaption, and then looking at defining that marketing plan, and then actually implementing and making changes to the marketing plan. So, anytime we're doing uh, marketing analysis, we're doing any type of business overseas, Ultimately, it has to be good return on investment. Uh, finance people do such things as net present value or internal rate of return, but you have to believe that it's, it's going to be a profitable project, otherwise you're not going to engage in it. Now, there might be some uh, things that companies do that might be philanthropic uh, that they try to do to just show good or do good in the world, but you know the goal is to make money on this, and it has to be profitable for the company to remain financially thriving and viable for the long term. So, you know, decisions have to be made. You know, where is the best place to market my product? And what do I have to do to make sure it can be sustained for a period of time? Okay. Some uh, other things, too, in that chapter, they also look at, you know, the different ways that we could engage in overseas business. They could be franchising, ventures, exporting. But again, for the purpose of this class, we're going to look at it as a direct foreign investment, which is an option too, which does require more capital. But we're making assumptions for this class that you have the capital to do this. All right. Chapter 13 this week, um, kind of look at the question of quality that's brought up in the beginning of the chapter. You know, today almost quality is a given. If you don't have quality in place, although it varies from place to place, people are not going to buy your product. And Today, with so much information, you know, markets are competitive with the sources of the internet and electronic information. We can look at online, re read reviews. You know, I think about like TripAdvisor. I look at different places of vacation. Um, it's a good idea, or it behooves you to look at those and read those reviews. You know, is this worth your time, money for the product and service that you're buying? So, uh, people, consumers, think about these things, and marketers have to think about these things too. Make sure we maintain quality, and that can be even you know quality after the product is sold in terms of service. Some uh, other things you know they mentioned here is kind of some interesting behavioral things. I thought it was kind of funny in the, the readings of this chapter about the Japanese and how uh, excited I guess they get about toilets. Uh, even the behavioral economics uh, came into play. If you'd seen the video I had put on uh, one of the posts about mind over money, but it talked about putting the fly in the toilet for a men's toilet. So make sure you know that the stream would stick and not require as much uh, cleanup, if you will. So, but uh, it's you know little tweaks uh, and things that you can do to a product or a service to try to improve the situation. But sometimes you know with, with the example of the stove in India, it may be just you know what is the basic need, and maybe we don't need all the bells and whistles. You know what's the best product for them, and also you know later we look at you know the pricing too. What can they afford? Okay. But. Um, you know, a lot of this chapter two kind of goes along with that idea is, you know, of uh, with the marketing plan, standardization versus adaption. You know, standardization definitely lowers cost and, you know, and branding and keeps the uh, brand visible out there in the market. 
but we have to maybe adapt in some places too. We may even have to adapt our packaging or how we label things based on local laws. So it's very rare that if we're doing any uh, investment overseas or marketing overseas that you don't have to adapt your product. You know, you're, you're going to have to follow laws and it could be uh, even green laws that the, the product is acceptable. So, but getting back to the idea of adaption, you know, it's, it's a trade-off because again, uh, economies of scale can exist, the lower per unit cost, I keep everything standard and the same when I have a marketing plan, but if I don't adapt, then perhaps, you know, it's viewed through a, a certain lens of the culture and they, they just don't accept the product. So I, I need to get in there and kind of find out what's going to be accepted in that local culture, a theme that occurs all the way through this course. So, all right, well, I think that's it for this week, but, um, you know, next week is week five, uh, a little bit easier that week with the do good audit. All you just have to do is the paper and just you know, continue with the, the forum discussions. I'll, I'll talk about that more next week, but for this week, you know, make sure to get that uh, template it's completed. Make sure to upload it all in one place. Um, you'll also the templates consist of that porters. We actually rank you know one through five and do a spider diagram for each country, and then you know a two to four page paper uh, summarizing what you found out about that. And again, you know get in there early and post the forum discussions. But if you do have any questions, do email me. You know after uh, week five, get a little break, uh, Thanksgiving break. But don't forget about that base of pyramid. Uh, try to read a little bit of that book as you move along. And you'll know, be thinking about that final project and the base pyramid report. Uh, try to get some done now so that way when we get into that weeks six and seven, uh, you, you have more time. You're not under pressure to get those things done. So have a great week, and we'll talk to you later.